So for those of you who are live streaming with us, we live stream to about 20 countries each Sunday, so you are far away from here. We've had some record weather uh, this past week. It was 80 degrees in the district. I think it got to 71 in Falls Church. I had a doctor appointment that day, and I went in wearing a t-shirt and shorts, and the doctor says, who are you trying to be wearing that? And I said, I'm trying to be a teenager. So, um, so you know, she kind of looked at me. Um, not very well. <laughs> At a very large university graduation, the university president rose to address the graduates and confer their degrees. He began by explaining the meaning of the traditional Latin phrases used. If a student graduates cum laude, it means with honors. If a student graduates magna cum laude, it means with high honors. If a student graduates summa cum laude, it means with supreme honors. Then he said, there's a new one that I plan to use in the future that doesn't sound at all like the regular honors. It's called magna cute dentium, which means by the skin of your teeth. <laughs> Some of us may have been in that predicament when we graduated from high school, college, graduate school. We graduated by the skin of our teeth. Today's gospel takes place at the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, and as we learned last week, Jesus had called Simon, Andrew, James, and John to discipleship. And Mark tells us that then immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And we're going to find that as we look at the book of Mark, Jesus moves quickly. There's always words like immediately and suddenly. And we get the definite impression that Jesus' first-time listeners felt like they barely understood his teaching as though they would pass his test by the skin of their teeth, if at all. They were astonished by his teachings. His teaching was out of this world, for he taught to them as one who had great authority. And Jesus did not sound like the regular synagogue leaders that would preach. As Jesus spoke, a man possessed by an unclean spirit interrupted Jesus. But Jesus quickly drove the demon out of the afflicted man and cured him. And everyone in the worship service were amazed. And they questioned them, saying, Who is this? A new teaching. He commands even the unclean spirits with authority, and they obey him. And at once, his fame spread throughout all of the surrounding region of Galilee. It is every public official's nightmare that as they are speaking, someone from the crowd will suddenly stand up and in a loud voice challenge them of what they're talking about or even heckle them. And we have seen that in the news media recently. President Biden, issues with Gaza and Israel. We see it in school board meetings about gender identity. College president issues, college protests. That same fear is for preachers who have spent years to prepare a meaningful sermon to be suddenly jarred by someone speaking out or shouting out. So please keep your thoughts to yourself. <laughs> My biggest problem through the years has been the cell phone ringing, and that's kind of gone away. So I think everybody gets the message now. Think about if we were in that synagogue worshiping and Jesus is teaching. Think about when we are in this space worshiping and Pastor Dave is preaching or whoever is preaching God's word. We're interested in Christ. We're fascinated by Jesus. We long for Jesus in our lives. But as we gather to worship this day, 
Are we truly dedicated to Christ? Does our presence signify that we acknowledge Jesus as the supreme authority in our lives of someone who tells us what to do, of how we're to live? Do we look to Jesus or do we try to be our own authorities and then we find ourselves in a big, big mess? Think of our worship services. We work hard to ensure that everything is in the right place, to make the worship tame, make it safe. But Jesus is not here only to enlighten and illumine us, but he comes to bind us free, to transform our lives. And the scripture invites us to see how Christ not only brings us freedom, but Jesus transforms our lives as well. Today we're going to look at unclean spirits. In this scripture lesson, there is an unclean spirit in a person, and that person shouts out, and Jesus heals this person. So I want us all to think about this day, what are some unclean spirits that we may have in our lives and how we can call on Christ to help us with those unclean spirits. I'm going to name a few for you. You don't have to shout them out in confession, but I will share some that I have dealt with in my life and in my ministry and in the world of what I perceive as um, unclean spirits in our lives. And I have that for two reasons. One is that we're all sinners in need of redemption and that we have unclean spirits. So the first one that I have is the unclean spirit of racism. And you know, I've told you many times before, I grew up in a small southern town, um, a very racist uh, society. And when we... Uh, my parents' age, when they tried to integrate schools, there was a lot of white flight, and um, my family stayed in the schools. I kind of tell people my seventh grade was 26 white kids and two black, and then when I went to eighth grade, it was reversed. 27 black kids and two white kids. You should have seen Pastor Dave trying to play basketball in gym. It wasn't a pleasant sight. But we still deal with racism in our world. Unclean spirit toward a person's sexuality. And in our United Methodist Church, we're dealing with this, and there has been disaffiliation. And so over the last two years, 25% of United Methodist churches have left. And then it's more than that because another 5% have closed for whatever reason. So you take over the last few years, we have lost 30% um, of our churches. I don't know that it's 30% of our people because a lot of these churches are smaller uh, churches in rural areas. But that is something that we continue to grapple with in the United Methodist Church, and we have a general conference coming up soon that hopefully we can find some uh, answers and try to have transformation in our churches. I have the unclean spirit of not sharing our wealth with others. And in my ministry, I experience people in poverty. And many are invisible in our society. Um, a good example is when we do the Ministry of Hope for 250 folks. Uh, I would say some are not in poverty, but many are. And then just talking to folks who visit us, they tell what it means to be in poverty. And how when we give them a simple grab-and-go breakfast bag and a $10 giant card, it changes their entire day. 
Someone can go to Giant and purchase items for $10 and have a meal for that day. Another unclean spirit is not caring for others, showing compassion. And I want to use a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He says, Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Think about that. Not what our neighbor's doing, not what our other family is doing, not what Doolin Church is doing, what not Pastor Dave is doing, but what am I, what are you doing to help others? Another unclean spirit is addictions in our lives, and there are all types of addictions. The unclean spirits politically... We see in our nation where we are just tearing ourselves apart at the seams. And we need to think about how can we find reconciliation with those who may not believe what we believe, but what common ground can we find to serve others and not only ourselves? I think that many people with political agendas, if they would look at not only what they want, but what is best for the greater good for society, we could get a lot more done. I know in my ministry of some 34 years now, I have said to myself each and every day when there is a decision that needs to be made, what is not best for Pastor Dave What is not best for particular individuals, but what is best for the entire community of Doolin Church as we move forward to transform people's lives? (laughs) Here's one I have. Unclean spirits in the church. Gossip. People love to tell gossip. And the thing is that I have learned that when someone starts something, the next person likes to make it more exciting and exuberant. And then the next person and the next person. And then when it comes back to me, it's like, what in the world? And then, of course, I have to spend time backtracking it and then figuring out where it began. And then things turn quickly when that happens. Jesus fights unclean spirits in our world. And you know, one of the vows that we take when we are baptized is this. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil and justice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? People, freedom, we have a choice. Power, influencing others, we have that choice. And what is it? that we're going to do. So think about ourselves in worship and what happens here in this room. We pray. We sing. We receive the bread and cup at communion. We share our concerns with others. We find this to be a quiet place in silence. We confess our sins. We hear God's word. We learn to forgive. We listen to the scriptures. And I would say to each and every one of us that as we move forward from this day, pull out your Bible. Keep one in the car. I keep one in the car. And when you have those moments that you feel that this unclean spirit in our lives is just bubbling up, pull out and go to the Psalms. Go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Go to Ecclesiastes, which means preacher. Turn to any of the scriptures, and there you will find God, and there you will find Jesus, and there you will find the Holy Spirit to help us with those conditions that hurt us in our lives. Remember what Jesus said to this man with the unclean spirit. Be silent and come out. 
So let this day, let this week, be one of introspection. To look inside our hearts, to look inside our minds, to look inside of how we use our hands and feet, to not serve only us, but to serve others. And that when we have issues in our lives, that we take time to not be impulsive and judgmental, but to step back and think, what can I do to make for the better good of a to show that I am a Christian, that I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, who is called to love and serve God and others? And my friends, that is the good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we all say together, Amen. Amen.